Hello, everybody. It's Corey at the Reset Girl. Hi, everybody. It's Corey at the Reset Girl. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Corey at the Reset Girl. Uh, you'd think after as many times as I've said it, I would have a way of saying it, but I don't. <laughs> I just wing it every time. All right. I am in a giddy mood because I'm about to do one very epically long video, I predict. So, with that in mind, I warn you now, you need to get a snack, you need to get something to sip, get comfy, because if you're watching it to the end, I think you may be here a while. That's my prediction. So before I jump into crafting and talking about this week's video, I would like to talk about last week's video. So in last week's episode, uh, week three video, uh, can we talk about the playlist? So when I was introing <laughs> that video, talking about how I was just going to use a music layover and I wasn't going to talk, I thought you guys were going to hear the same playlist that I had, and I was really excited for that. But apparently when we, when, when Mr. Crafty was editing it and was ready to insert the playlist, apparently <laughs> something went awry and he was not able to use it as he had thought. So a last minute scramble combined with a husband-wife miscommunication caused there to be a, a bunch of <laughs> thoughts that I had intended for like, just like backup emergency use. It wasn't even the songs that I had loving, lovingly chosen. So I don't know what happened there, but just know <laughs> that that wasn't what I intended. So I just, I, I felt the need to explain that. Okay, so secondly, I need to address the, the amount of struggle that I went through trying to glue and gather all those little pieces um, in different parts of my, you know, different pockets, like the wooden letters and the little diamonds. I realized after the fact that I should have used a different tool <laughs> for picking up all those little pieces. And here's one tool I have that I could have used. Um, it's for picking up rhinestones, but it would work perfectly for a job like that. It's got a little sticky tip and that you can just pick up little objects with very easily and then, you know, put them where you want or, you know, attach them with glue. So I linked that tool in the description box below. I did end up buying another one of those for myself because I, I think that every crafter should have one in their arsenal. I'm not exactly sure where mine is, so I just got another one. Okay, and then finally, thank you so much for all the great feedback you gave me regarding my question in last week's video. I asked about how you feel about the music overlay versus uh, someone who kind of talks through their video. I did anticipate that the majority of people would say that they prefer chatty vi videos versus music. And I appreciate that I do because that really is how I feel when I'm crafting. Um, largely, I feel like I am crafting with my friends. I, I am thinking of you. It's the reason why I want to explain things. The reason why I'm sharing my thoughts is because I genuinely want to help you understand or appreciate different concepts that I could not grasp in the beginning of my own little walking through this whole little crafting adventure. I did not understand certain things like why do people choose what they do? Why do they put things together the way that they do? Like I didn't understand any of that. So I think that's been a big driver for me is helping you understand it so that you will be inspired and empowered to, you know, be confident in your crafting choices. So that's always been very meaningful to me. But now having said that, I did try the silent crafting, you know, being an introvert, a lot of us love that kind of peaceful time where we're crafting. And I did really like it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I really liked it. And I think that by talking in the beginning and talking at the end and explaining things, I think that that actually is a kind of a, a nice workaround for that. And it's actually easier for me to film and, and uh, mark to edit. but. I think that although that's really nice and it was really great, I don't think that would be the bulk of the videos that I do. Um, I think that it will probably be like a mix is what I'm guessing of both styles. But today is the day where there will be a lot of talking. 
a lot of talking. So get your put your feet up, get comfy because it is going to be I anticipate it's going to be long. So for today's video, we are going to be looking at the week four prompt, which is right here. And that is going to be a verse, quote, or lyric. So I knew that of, of the choices that I knew I wanted to do a verse of scripture. That was a given. And then it was a matter of like, I wonder what will catch my eye. I wonder what I'm going to go with. At first, I wasn't really, I didn't have a clear vision for what that that uh, scripture was going to be. So what ended up happening was the other day, I hosted a live event in our clubhouse, our, our exclusive little membership that we have. And I hosted it for pocket crafting. And I wanted to demonstrate ideas for completing pockets. And so what I did in that, I, I shared my um, past camp reset junk journals. Like I grabbed one of them this one, as a matter of fact. And I wanted to kind of, and I'm telling you this too, but I wanted to um, show how you can look through your past work, look at your own projects um, for inspiration, especially if you've done stuff that you really love and perhaps you can reimagine it, a new version of it. So I was flipping through and this was uh, the era of going through and loving pockets. So this is like, I think the year after Camp Wanacraft, where pocket fever, <laughs> as I affectionately call it, um, was born. So um, I found another way to incorporate pockets into my crafting. And as I was flipping through, um, and, and largely I think my crafting is often based around color for sure. And I had a magazine. Um, I A lot of these are like pictures from magazines that I had just kind of repurposed and used in kind of a, a crafting way um, that that time. And this one really stood out to me. This is actually uh, one of the times we have offered a digital um, planning hunk, a planner hunk collection. <laughs> we always have the planner honeys, but this time there was a planner hunk collection and it had this guy in it and he's wearing a little Fisher hat. And so I had made um, this card where I wrote out part of Mark 117, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Most of us are familiar with that. And, uh, and I really loved it. Plus, he's sitting on one of my favorite, 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 favorite scrapbook papers. So I pulled him out and now I'm going to hold on to him for the sake of this video because he is my muse. He is actually what I built my entire project around. So I wanted to talk about that and I'm going somewhere with this. I do have, <laughs> he is the inspiration and I am I built an entire kind of concept around this. So I, I really meditated about this and I, and I got really inspired by a certain concept and I wanted to do a big spread to showcase this idea. So I want to showcase the concept of fishing as we know it today with a biblical application. So I, having said that, I chose to do, um, this is the front of last week's um, page, and this is the back. And I could have just done, you know, this page and been done, but I decided that this was just not enough to showcase my, my concept that I just am really excited about and think is really cool. So I decided to use one of the most challenging of the pocket page formats, which is this one, the grid, 12 little squares. Now, this particular one is from uh, the classic Happy Planner. So I'm going to have to modify this strip right here so that it will work with my ring bound planner. But that is no problem. I will show you how to do that. I am really excited. I, I told you there's a lot of there's a lot of crafting going on in this particular episode. So so if for a grid like this, this is kind of sometimes uh, something that some crafters will avoid. It looks like a lot of work and it is, but it's so worth it. It's so worth it. So there's two different ways, in my opinion, that you can kind of approach a grid like this. So I have a couple examples of ones that I have done in the past. So I'm going to show that to you. So here's our empty grid. And then here is the one that is its same size and 
This is a really common way people will fill up the pockets. They will do a mixture of photographs. These are my photographs of my RV, like my craft space in my RV. And then I mixed it with some scrapbook paper or magazine. Background is what I can tell that one is. And kind of added a few little embellishments. This is a case where I kept the text that was on the magazine page so that I just had one word. So I was just trying to, I don't know, showcase. And I, I love, I absolutely love putting these together. I love gathering the different patterns and the different colors together. This one was definitely more photo based and I don't tend to do, I don't tend to do photos a lot. So I like the, the mixture of paper. And then I have a little baby version. So there is a little small mini grid if you get the little uh, six by four mini pages. And the pages for these things are all linked below in the description box. I did cover the small format and as well as the large and the different um, mixture of pages that they offer. So these are what you would call like, I'm, I'm calling them like a mixed assortment. But then you can also do this style where you take a single photo or magazine. Um, I think this is a magazine picture and this is one of our pictures because that's me and Mark in the Bible time mobile. Um, so then you cut them into squares and set them up, like reassemble it essentially. And it's quite stunning when you see it that way. I mean, it is pretty, it, I think it's really stunning. Uh, it seems like it's a lot of work, but you're still cutting up the paper. You're just cutting it very specifically, but it's still a really fun way of doing this. So don't be afraid of the grid, the giant grid, because it actually can be very rewarding, especially when you finish it. So that is what I wanted to share was we're going to go with the mixed grid approach. What I attempted to do was... Uh, pull from my paper stash and I pulled my vintage ephemera that I really love like vintage maps textbook pages receipts ads those kinds of things and then mix some of my scrapbook paper in there so I played around with my paper stash and I came up with this assortment here's what my grid will look like once it's kind of assembled and you'll notice I'm missing two spots right here. And that is because I'm going to cut out those pieces on camera so that you can see how did I achieve this? What does that look like? I just wanted to give you a couple ideas of, you know, when you cut your paper, I'm very intentional what I cut so that it, it has a certain feel to it. On this one, I actually kind of, technically I've already embellished this one. This is actually a, um, a vintage ticket that I had and I basically held it against my sh <laughs> against the paper and I cut it with it so that it was all um it was cut as well and I just stapled it in place so it is kind of become one it's, it's melded together I would also say that about this one so I took this is actually ledger paper that I cut um I okay how do I explain this so I took a piece of paper like this I held it up against a piece of scrapbook paper and I actually glued it against it. And then I took my photo crop and I held it and cut it into a perfect square. So that's how I got this piece, which is actually a piece of ledger and a piece of scrapbook paper that makes a perfect two inch square. Cause I just think that looks really cool. So there's that. I have a couple pieces over here that I'm going to use to fill in these blanks. And I have a little box full of photo crops. These are also in the description box below. These are from Simple Stories. They are kind of hit and miss finding them. I don't know that they're manufactured anymore. So I've noticed that I've, it's kind of hit and miss when I can get my hands on a set of them. So I have like a backup set just in case. They look like this. These are actually the circle ones. They're um, this kind of hard, uh, clear translucent plastic. Now, I do also have listed um, the, the cutting mats from Dollar Tree. It's a thinner material. It's shiny on one side and the kind of frosted texture on the other. And it's much thinner. It's much easier to cut it. So I just want to you to be warned <laughs> because as you're cutting your paper, you can literally cut this material. One of the community members on YouTube 
said that on one, she commented on one of my videos once that this is what she uses. And I was, I was so delighted because at the time I was trying to find ways of creating like a cover like this. This, this is actually what I use to make my own like disc bound covers um, when I make my own notebooks. And so that's part of the cutting mat. So I also use them to make these little photo crops. So I am using this two inch one from Simple Stories. And that is how I ended up making these perfect little squares. It is a two by two. That is what the size of the pocket is. So here's what I just wanted to point out. Sometimes how you cut the paper can make things more exciting. Definitely. It can make things more interesting. And so that's just something you want to be aware of when you're holding it up to this paper. It has um, really interesting text on it. It also has white space. So depending on how I was going to use this, I might want to take advantage of that white space or take advantage of all the text that's on the paper. In this case, because I know I'm going to put an embellishment on it, I'm probably going to want to take advantage of the white space. So what I am going to do here is I'm actually going to cut this part off and this will actually end up in my little box that I keep all my little bits and pieces in. So that would not get thrown away. I just put it in a smaller box of littler paper. And then this is what I'll use to punch to make little tiny punched paper or other elements that I want to, you know, other little pieces of decor, if you will. So now I have this. So this is going to occupy one of the spaces here. And then I'm going to use it on this paper. So there's this really kind of like a mottled darker blue on here. And the reason why I love this so much is because it does remind me of the water with the little bubbles in it. So it's something I want to either take advantage of this really bright blue on here or the lighter, softer color here. I think it's the same blue on this. I think that, yeah, that's one in the same where this one came from. So, which will be nice because it'll be demonstrated in its full form here in the grid. So I'm gonna kind of compromise and use one of the corners, not the brightest and not the lightest, kind of, kind of the mama bear, if you will. And then that's gonna lay there. So what I love to do with my grid is I like to make sure my eye, when I look around and sweep, sweep around the grid, does my eye feel like it's moving in a certain direction? Does it feel like it's balanced? Is, are the colors balanced? So one of the things I like to kind of have are things that sort of echo each other's the best way I can think of to describe it. So this mustard yellow is kind of an outlier. It doesn't really have another mustard element in here to match with it, which is fine. I, I, that doesn't bother me. I think the this is a perfect example of how holding the, the crop against the paper and getting, you know, the pattern cut a certain way. Um, it's ra rather interesting. You can see like your eye is drawn to this downward motion of the the, the stripes. So I really like that. And I feel like once it's in here, it, I want to keep it going in that direction. This is the other favorite, favorite, favorite paper that I have. This is from the same crate paper collection. And I love them together. So I love the little stars. Those are fun. This is from a textbook from 1959. And uh, it has some, some little kid probably skip, scribbled crown on it. So I love that. So I wanted to keep that in there. And this kind of light pale blue is also what you'll see here in the map. This is a real map. I believe this map is of Florida, I think. I seem, well, one side of it is Florida. I just can't remember. But I'm pretty sure something, some part of it is. And then I have, um, so here's ledger paper up here, which also mirrors this kind of cream here. These two blues are mirrored. This right here is also um, kind of is reminiscent of the ledger. It's from a pink paisley, a really old paper from there. I can't remember the name of the collection, but it had an office theme. And then here's an ad, a little vintage ad for fish. Obviously, I'm going with a little fish theme, which I'm going to speak about in a minute. And, and I thought that was fun. I always love having some black and white graphic element to a layout with like pops of color. I think that's a nice balance. This is an advertisement for a turntable from the, also probably from the late 50s, early 60s. 
and that green is just gorgeous. So I really wanted that in there. So that's there. And then that's a little picture that somebody uploaded to Flickr of Lucille Ball when she was filming the movie Forever Darling. And she has a cute, <laughs> there's a scene in there uh, where she they go fishing. And it's it kind of is reminiscent of the I Love Lucy episode where her and Ricky have the the bet of who's going to catch more fish. So I had I thought that was another fun little thing to add in there. And so this is kind of my little foundation and we're getting ready for the next step, which is to prep these for becoming the pockets, my little pocket squares. But we want to embellish them and then we're going to do the star of the show. We're going to be adding some Jesus fish. So my idea for my spread has to do with you know, fishing. And when I thought about what fishing entails and what you need for fishing is you need the right lure to catch the right fish, right? So I was looking at lures online and I was just really amazed at the vintage lures that they had, the uh, vintage fishing lures, how colorful, how vibrant, how just really, I mean, just really beautiful that they, they were real craftsmanship and some of them were just really eye-catching and I was really checking them out you know I've printed them on photo paper now I had to print them a certain size because they had to fit in this pocket so they needed to be less than two inches in order to fit in here comfortably you'll notice that the side of his body is pretty white kind of a silvery white so what I was imagining is that I was going to write something on each of my fishing lures and then they would be added here to the picture. So I'm going to set these up the way I kind of had laid them out before. So some of them are quite colorful. When I was playing around with them, I was trying to decide who was going to go where. So based on their color, that really does factor in a lot of who's going where. And it's going to make sense. and. A minute once I get them all situated here. It's kind of a subtle statement. <laughs> this is this is not going to be in your in your face crafting. So here is um, a little picture of a fishing lure, and I wrote on the side of it the word is truth, because I was really thinking about it. When you think about how Jesus said, you know, I'll teach you to be fishers of men. So we use that today as as a way of of kind of demonstrating or explaining what evangelism is. And when we talk about Jesus, what does Jesus offer? What is what is the lure? So I started thinking about though that concept and I came up with the I, different ideas for that. So I'm going to write um each of those concepts on a fish <laughs> and I'll hold it up so that you can see uh what my what I came up with for my little list. So my first one is relationship. <laughs> Isn't that one of the things that we tell people? It's not religion, it's relationship. Another thing that's a lure is eternal life. Okay, so I had to substitute one of my fishies. So on this one is identity. And I'm going to cut this one out because then you can see how I did it. They're obviously tricky to cut out because they've got like little hooks. So in some cases, I really had to uh, adjust for that. Um, another thing I feel like, and, and this is all very subjective. Um, you, might, you might have different thoughts on it, but this is what I, I thought about um, that is promised in our, you know, the relationship with him is comfort. This one is peace. So this one I already did, which was truth. And this guy who I just bapped on the head. <laughs> this one I put adoption. On this one, I put a high priest. That is what Jesus is. He's our high priest. And then my final fishy is a kingdom. Unlike any kingdom, 
that man could come up with. So here are my fishies mixed in with other other things here. And so I'm going to cut this one out and then I'm going to start gluing them down. I'm going to use my little fussy cutting scissors and my little crafting glasses because this is tricky work. So if you are inspired to do anything like this, there are some little hooks that are kind of hanging out from the fish and some of them are would be quite difficult to try to cut carefully. So I am kind of kind of fussy cutting around them. Some of them I did snip off depending on how problematic they were. Like this one I'm probably going to cut off. I already have another hook on here established so it's easy to tell that he's a lure. I just thought of the question for this week. Um, what would you write on a fish? And you can just drop, you know, a single word in the comment, but let me know what you would have written on a, on a fishing lure, what you feel like. I love that. So there's my identity. He's, you know, we're offered a new identity in Christ. And how glorious is that? So I am now going to spend some time gluing them down. In this case, this one, I, I think what I'm going to do, so the packaging for some of them are just so cute that I don't actually want to lose that. So on some of them, I'm just trimming them down and leaving. I might actually, what I think I'll do, these are pretty separate. I think what I'll do is I'll separate the box so it's still part of the image and then I'll, not the image, the square. So I'll keep that and then I'll just cut I'll trim him up and then add him back. I think he's a pretty important fish. He is truth. <laughs> and that comes out of Jesus' own mouth when he says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Also really great lure names. So there's my little fishies. Those are my lures, if you will. They've been biblically changed. So I'm going to glue them down and then I will show you how I might embellish some of them and then we'll pop them into their pockets. So let's start gluing. Okay, I was looking at my little map a little closer because I remember when I was cutting into it that one of the maps was Florida. <laughs> and now I'm not sure if that's what I have there or not, but I was just thinking to myself as I was gluing these down that Florida is such a great place for fishing and it's a place my dad wanted to go in his RV and go fishing. One of the things also that I thought of about this picture right here, um, and I, I was talking about this with my mom last night is that uh, as a little kid, my when I think of my grandma, she reminded me of Lucille Ball. They both had red hair. They both had a really loud laugh. And I loved I Love Lucy. In fact, the very first time I remember watching it was at my grandma's house. So I always kind of like associated my grandma and her. <laughs> they were kind of in my mind, they were very similar. And so I have very fond feelings towards her. But one of the things that I thought of as I was contemplating adding her to the spread was, and I'm saying this in a purely secular way, but she definitely was a, a person that attracted people to her. Like she was a fisher of men's in a way in that her, her talents, uh, her amazing comedic talents um, made her so beloved and so popular people to this day will laugh at her you know she's 
She was just a very uh, funny woman that very dynamic and she attracted a lot of people that way. Um, so I kind of felt like, you know, I'm going to add her in here. <laughs> I'm going to keep her in here. Um, and plus she looks so cute holding little fish, kind of selling my little, my story here. So I have my little lures in place and now I kind of want to add some bling to it. Um, so I have a couple options. One of them are these really fun stickers that I found. I had bought these in Japan and I had tucked them away and not realized I had them anymore. So I am going to use these. These will be much easier than gluing all those little tiny stars. Um, although I do love my little stars. One thing I do love about this is this particular, these little stars here are more champagne-y. Um, so it's a very, it's a different, they're more cool toned and these are definitely more gold toned. So little details like that are stuff that I think about when I'm looking like, do I want the warm gold or the cool? Um, also, what I thought would be fun to add are my little enamel dots. I think these would be really cool, especially on some of the, the papers that have kind of like very uh, straight lines to kind of add a, a few of these little dots on here. So I'm going to attempt to do that next is add probably the smallest of them, which is why I had to buy new ones because I kept using up all my small ones. There's some from Waffle Flower that have a lot of smalls. Just looking to see what I got to work with here. Okay. Ooh, and there's cork and wood. Okay, so I think I'm going to use, I really like this green right here. And I like that green right there. And this, those pink. That size is what I'm looking for, is that really small size. So... I think those are going to work well. And this is kind of a different color than that pink. I don't think I have many little ones. I have that one single brown one, which is not enough. I like putting um, my embellishments on in threes. I just, I really feel like it's the right number. <laughs> it's the only number that will do. Okay, so which fishy is going first? I kind of, I think this one is catching my eye as my first. My first little fish. And I feel like with him, he's very, his page is very bright. He's very happy. I was trying to decide, like, how are you going to know when, so like this gold is going to look amazing with that teal. So that's, that's one thing going for it. Another thing is this one kind of begs the question is, should I replace some of the stars in the paper with the gold? So that one will probably be the one I do that for. If I go this way, which would I pick for this? Aha, uh -huh. I would probably go with this gorgeous pink right here and put three pink dots because that's kind of a contrasting color. It won't blend in. It'll actually stand out and we'll just do three across the top. So this is kind of another favorite embellishment of mine is just doing like a little row of the tiny enamel dots. I just, I like the less is more uh, sometimes, especially for a layout like this because you have so many there's so many things going on here. So sometimes you don't, you don't want it to be too crazy. So on this one, I don't want to do any of those. I do like the idea of this whole sheet is all little dots practically. So let me just pull it out and see what I got going here. This is what I will do is kind of I will, uh, what do you call it when someone is auditioning? You are on, you're auditioning to see if you're going to be a fit. And I think these green ones, this row right here, I think they're my, I think they're the winner. Because there's a green in this um, packaging that is just really wonderful. I'm, a, even though this blue is also in there, I'm a, I'm a lesser fan of it. I don't, I don't especially love that shade of blue, so. This color green, though, I'm a big fan of. So, actually, I wanted this lower one. Now, because this card has got some white space to it, it, I might end up, I might end up adding something else to that one because there is white space, the numbers, or I might not at all. I like the three dots. 
I might add some gold there. So this one might be also a gold thing. This one. Now, I feel like he definitely needs a contrast and he has kind of this orangey color to him. So the three dot situation could work here and I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards the pink and putting them around the little turntable. It's so amazing to me. I think of all the, you know, like this was a, a new and more of a new invention, these newfangled turntables. It's always fun seeing advertising for that era and seeing all of the breakthrough, you know, that they were doing then. So I think that's kind of fun at making it kind of follow the, the same curvature. And then this one, I kind of feel like the scribble almost reminds me of like a little flying saucer. You know, there's a little dome. There's the edge going around it. <laughs> um, I am kind of, since I'm gonna, probably going to do the gold stars on this, I probably don't want to do it on this one. But I'm not sure if this one has a good fit. Those, those green, that green looks amazing. I don't like that purple either. Not a fan. I do like the cream. Um, I think I'm going to go that. That cream actually didn't bother me, even though it does seem like it's kind of standing out. It actually, because of its texture and the reason it's popping off the page, it actually looks really neat. But I think I'm going to go with this lighter green on this one. I didn't really know how I was going to do these. But again, because I their backgrounds are so busy and I don't want I don't want too much stuff to kind of steal the spotlight from the fish themselves and not, they're not fish, lures, I should say, the lures and what they say, I think it's important to keep the embellishment really simple. And when I when you do something simple like this, it actually modernizes it it makes it feel more contemporary and modern so this little guy th i think this is a good use of the little white ones and i'm trying to make him look like he's maybe underwater i'm not sure if i can achieve that in three moves but we'll see kind of he also feels like he could use like a word strip here. So I do have my little Dymo label, um, my little label buddy. Maybe I might make a label for him. Not sure. Let me look at this guy. Now, this one kind of makes me feel like I could go at an angle with this one. That might be kind of neat. And also maybe a, a gradient. So like getting bigger. Oh, and maybe putting it on the actual, the stripe, not the, mm, I can't decide. Do I like the white or on the actual yellow? Interesting. Maybe right here. I think right there. That looks cool. Okay. I think I'm going to do that and make this one be at the very top since I know that's where it's going to fit. I feel like I'm really late to the party on these enamel dots. I know they're not as popular as they probably were. From what I can tell from my research, <laughs> looking at collections, it seems like companies rolled them out with every collection. And I noticed that it doesn't seem to be that way anymore, but I could be wrong. I don't, I don't consider myself to be somebody in the scrapbook world. I just noticed when I had, when I went looking for them, they were a lot harder to find. Ooh, that orange is a really good fit for orange. Ooh, pink on it. So trying to decide where to lay some out here. Do I also, I might also want to go with 
gold stars here since they're kind of surrounded with yeah I could do gold stars here actually I'm gonna do the gold stars on this one so I know I've done it okay so what I think I'll do is block you I'm gonna add one here there that's so fun it gives you like a little extra texture I think on this I'm going to put gold stars along the coastline as if those are fishing spots. <laughs> Don't forget to fish here. This is a really good spot. It gets a good fishing hole. Okay. And then this little guy here, he is going to get a little row of what color will it be? I love this green. I do need to pay attention to where he's located. So this little guy and this little guy have not been done. I can get away with using the cream colored ones, which is fun. They're they're kind of my favorite because when you put them on, oh wait, I can't use them there though. Let me see. What if I switch these around? No, see, I can't switch them around because this is already a lot of white space to handle. This is why the grid can be a challenge because once you move one thing, you know, you realize I, that's why it's important to balance. So even though that would look amazing with cream on it, because I put them on here or over here, I'd, I don't know. I don't think that that might not be a good decision. Let me make one. See, mm, I even thought about what if I bring this down here, but I feel like that's a lot of white. That's a lot of cream. Yeah, I like that less. I feel like you need to have more balance in every row there's something that's a little different the only, the only one there i could probably see the justification for moving that was probably be better on the colors a little better these two are kind of a lot of white side by side but i don't it doesn't bother me okay so unfortunately i can't move that guy in my mind, I can't move him. So that kind of limits. I don't know. I guess I'm going with the stars again. Am I? Yeah. Or do I use the time to break out maybe something else? Maybe an arrow? I have this one cork arrow. <laughs> Just hanging out there. I also have some cork dots. I don't know, maybe we do that. I didn't think I was pulling out my cork, but. Ooh, only two? I don't know if I can do that. Let me see what happens if I put him, let's put him over the writing. Okay, I think that was a good call. I think moving her was a good call. So we've got two non-fishies here, three fish, two fish, three fish. So yeah, I wish I could brighten this up. I wish it didn't have that gray cast to it, but you can't have it all. So with this one, I feel like maybe three dots in the upper, I feel like I'm playing pool, three dots in the upper pocket. Um, let me see here. So this has got this kind of like creamy orange. Well, maybe it's more yellow. Let's let's see what happens when we play with. This isn't really a contrast. I would call it more of a compliment. Okay. Ooh. Uh oh. Come on. Ooh. I have a rogue dot. <laughs> he does not want to he does not want to play he's just like nope not today okay so let me let me try the, the little tweezers and move him into place whoa see he's not having it <laughs> it was going too well it was going too well my crafting was just it was just flowing too smoothly okay let's try that again uh, I'm going to press it down within an inch of its life so it'll stick. Okay. Okay. Let's clear out 
let's clear out boys all the dots need to go um i feel like lucy probably deserves a few stars she brought a lot of laughter to people okay okay i think that is it i think that is kind of is it though i just looked over at this little guy and he's got these bubbles it kind of made me think do i want to throw those in there but it, uh i don't think so i think i'm gonna do a word strip i think i'm gonna redo this little guy's word because it, it's really important to me it's truth this is uh, some like 1980s Dymo label. It's like a wood grain label. I love it so much. I bought it off of a, a eBay seller probably like six years ago. I can't trust it as much, even though it is sticky, even after all these years. But I do. I like security, so I generally put some glue stick on it. But I, I love it so much. I'm going to I'm genuinely going to be bummed when I've used it all up. I think I feel pretty good about stopping here and then like sitting with it and seeing if it just needs anything. Once it it's matched up with its other page, I think that's when it will really tell. Does it really need anything? Because it we, we really are going to have a lot of fishy stuff going on here. So I'm going to start popping these in. Hopefully they're all going to fit. They appear to be fitting. Come on. <gasps> Woo! I knew that was going to happen. You got to be careful of these enamel dots when you slip them in the pocket because they will catch on the on the edge every time. These lures, man, <laughs> they're they are fighting their way. They do not like to be pinned in by this pocket. I I hear Frank Sinatra in my head. I gotta be free. <laughs> You're like, no, don't trap us in there. Okay, I th it's going a little faster. As as you may know, I am I'm an I'm an eclectic crafter. I don't I don't like matchy matchy. I don't like uh, using you know scrapbook collections where everything blends and matches together. And, and I know it can look like really great. Uh, I don't deny that it doesn't look good. I just don't feel very inspired crafting like that. I like bringing odd things together, things that weren't meant to be together. Like who thought there would be a scrapbook spread full of vintage fishing lures and uh, enamel dots and an ad for, let's see, snap on, snap off floats. I contemplated adding a picture of, I have of my dad took, my parents used to take me and my brother, we used to go fishing on Mission Bay in San Diego, like in the little, the little rowboat and everything, like at, literally out on the bay. My dad would pop us in the boat and row us out into the water. And what I remember mostly was reading, <laughs> as you do. When you're an introvert kid, you always got a book. So I remember those trips more about reading than <laughs> fishing. <laughs> and I did think about adding that picture, but I decided to like focus more on the, the biblical thing, not really scrapbooking. So, all right. So I am going to move this paper out. It was really just to help hold everything. So there is my first, my first uh, pocket, pockety pockets. It's done. So let's talk about this pocket over here, this page. And let me, let me show you what my thoughts were. So I was kind of um, looking at different images, trying to, you know, get an idea of what I wanted to show. I did want to, I did see this one picture. Um, again, the, the photo credit, it's, it's from Flickr. This is actually a fishing boat in Ghana, Africa. It had a very kind of ancient feel very rustic and I really loved it. To me, it looks ra more, rather more biblical and I, I really liked it. I also found this cute little picture, this little vintage picture of these two little boys with their little cans of worms. And I thought to myself, like, 
the young Peter and Andrew, you know, they had no idea what they had in their future being fishermen from the time that they were boys. And they had no idea what they were going to grow up to be. And I just, I just love the idea of, of including that. Now we have, you know, we have our fisher guy. So I wanted to talk to you about this particular aspect of doing a layout or crafting or, you know, it's kind of like principle of design. I thought that would be a good point to make here um, because this is a process. This is what I go through in my head as I'm picking things. And I don't know how everyone picks things. So I just thought, well, I'll share with you how I pick things. This is how the layout, this is how they're going to look together side by side in the book. So what goes here, um, this is sort of like my anchor picture. In other words, this is where my fisherman is going to go and the verse itself, because that is the key point of this whole layout is the, is the verse. So I do have that fisherman. So I went back to the planner hunt collection and I got him and I tried him so here he is by himself so I could use my own background well my own options and then I actually digitally put him on a picture of some homemade fishing lures these are like made of yarn and scraps I, I just thought that was so neat so bright and fun so I thought about using this and then putting the verse on white word strips. I mean, because I love the color, but I also feel like, wow, there's a lot of color over here. And these are far more gentle and there's a lot of white space. So it kind of made me feel like maybe this is a little too busy and it needs to have a bit more harmony with something down here. So I have some options. I love a wood grain pattern. I have lots of different wood grains. They're a favorite of mine. So that would give you some nightwise space where you have word strips with the verse. So I'm going to basically copy the same style. I'm just going to do it on white strips. So that could be nice. But um, at the same time, it's a little meh. It doesn't, it's not, it's not ringing my bell. It's, I don't feel like it's finished. Then I have this awesome paper. I cannot remember whose paper this is. I don't know why I want to say it's Heidi Swap or it's Vicki Booten. It's one of the two. This was kind of neat. Um, then this is what I love. Now, finally, the mustard over here, it has a friend. Now it has something to echo if you, if you kind of stretch your eye over here. I don't hate it. I actually kind of love it. I love how the modeled look of it. It kind of, it, this absolutely kind of reminds me of seaweed, um, even though it is in yellow. Down in San Diego, where I grew up, there's tons of the sea kelp with these big yellow leaves. Oh, they're just, they wrap around your little leg under the water. They give you nightmares. <laughs> it's what they do. But that reminds me of that, just not in a traumatic way. Uh, then I have this paper, which is lovely. And it also has that kind of seaweed motion with the graphics. He pops on it. There's a lot of um, teal and blue over here. So that is like a nice, that's harmony. I feel like these two could really work well together. Like my eye just is drifting. Very, It's very lovely little motion that it's giving me, giving me good vibes. So, so far, this is my first, my first real contender. I feel really strongly about that. Now, another one. Well, let me actually show it this one. So this one is also really cool. I really, really, really like this one. I think this is a Maggie Holmes. It's got that cute girl with the little, the story, um, the book, it had books in it. I know you know. Tell me in the comments because I can't remember that particular collection, but that's where it's from. Okay, hear me out on this one. This totally feels like the ocean and the sky, which then echoes what this is up here and here. So this feels incredibly cohesive together. And they are a nice, calm sort of complement to the very crazy busy over here. He's a nice pop of color. So he doesn't, if, if all of it was just more of this kind of gradient, then it, I feel like it would fall flat. But because he's giving more of, more of those like a bright pop vibrancy, he's, I feel like he, he's kind of 
housing this all together in a really nice way. It feels more balanced. My eye has harmony. So between the two of these, I feel like this one is more powerful than this one is. So I'm eliminating that. Now, just when we thought it was going to be bachelor number one, bachelor number two is coming in and saying, hey, what about me? <laughs> I like this one too. It has this lovely white frame around it. It's giving the white space so that anything I put here in terms of like text is going to pop. I personally love this gold foiling that says this is the good stuff, which is kind of highlighting this beautiful verse. So I like it too. It also echoes like it's very, um, you know, clean white. It's echoing this, that background here. So I still feel like it's the same form of balance, just different. This is, I feel like this is very more like more dramatic. This is more me with the grid and the kind of like ledger feel. I just absolutely love any way that I can put any kind of like office supplies <laughs> into my layout. Um, any any feel of that, I am so that's I'm so happy with. So that's kind of why I feel like I, I'm gravitating towards this one. Plus, I also have that. Over here, I have that same type of grid with the numbers. I got the led ledger paper up here. So, man, this is a tough call. I might have to, I don't know. The other the other, you know, the other thing that's also winning here is it's grid. There's a, a, a profound grid that's very visible. There's a grid here, like it's echoing that idea. And you definitely want that, you know, when you do design. And, and that's what we're doing. We are designing little pieces of art and putting them in our pockets, but... Ultimately, when you see the full layout, you really do want cohesiveness. You want things to be balanced. They, they want it, you want to have harmony when, you, when you're looking at the whole spread. I really, really, really loved the idea of this spread, the, the whole idea behind it. So I really want it to be one of those things where I'm like, yes, that was a great decision. I, and I feel very strongly about this too. I do see like, to me, it's like, here's the foundation, the ocean and the sky. Here's the foundation, the ocean, and the sky. Here's the foundation, which is the ground and the sky. So these couldn't look better together to me if I, I mean, they, they look amazing. And the, the scriptures would look amazing. But then when I look at that, I also think, I wish I had a way of building that in gold letters, because then gold letters would be incredible. Then it would really pop. But I don't, what I could do is just put follow me. I bet I have enough gold letters to do follow me. And then over here on this side, I could make with my little, my little Dymo label, a little title card on top of the page. So it kind of, it's clearly not part of the pocket page. It would be longer than this and it would hold the letters fishers of men or be a fisherman. In other words, I would be making the verse a little bit more obscure. But yet, if you are a Christian, if you're a believer, you would get it, especially when you see the lures. I think all of this would be like, I get it. I, I understand the secret handshake here. If you guys also recall one of the symbols, I don't know if this is like true or not, but I remember, you know, the little Christian fish symbol. My understanding, what I was told is back in the day when Christians were persecuted for their faith, it wasn't something you could be public about. Uh, when they identified each other in the street, one man would draw with his sandal, his toe, would the curve, and then the other person would meet that curve and then create one of their own, which is that symbol, that Jesus fish symbol. So that also tells a powerful story, which I could just put that symbol right there too. I don't know. What will I do? What will I do? I need I need to take a sip. I need to take a sip. I need to take a break. I need to think about this and I'll be right back. Okay. And I made a decision off camera and then I crafted it off camera. So I'm going to reveal to you what the decision was and the final assembly of it, if you will. I don't know why that's probably the hardest crafting decision I may have ever made. I genuinely I even went and asked Mr. Crafty what his thoughts were and there there they were few. <laughs> <laughs> there there actually were none. <laughs> there, there was no input. I was on my own, but not really on my own, right? So here's the reveal. Drum roll. I 
went with the dramatic option and I love it. I love it. So here's how it will work together, what it will look together. I actually took a pen and I wrote a couple more scriptures that kind of tell a story. I would absolutely love it if this one could be first at the top and the two at the bottom, but that's not what I have to work with. So I will just have to use my imagination. Um, I wrote out on this one, Luke 510, from now on, you will be fishing for the souls of men. I'm using the living translation, which is more paraphrasy. So that's why it might sound a little different to your ears if you're not used to that. And on this one is Luke 5, 4, let down your nets and you will catch a lot of fish. And then here is the classic Mark 1, 17, follow me. I feel like the rest of that dot, dot, dot is kind of the entire spread, the homage, if you will. But we are not done yet. So let me go ahead and very carefully pop these in to the pockets because these letters, which are part of that really old freckled fawn <laughs> sticker sheet. These are very, very, very delicate. Probably the most delicate of all the things I've ever crafted with. I wanted to add a couple little, I really love like the little simple things up here. So I'm just going to add some little stars to this one as if they were out at night catching fish. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this. I forgot that I wanted to embellish these a little bit. So I'm going to add this one here. I would say this is more like a whole story and not just a scripture. I'm going to gently get this one into its pocket. Ooh, okay. It is in. And then on this one, um, what I wanted to do is I had punched out a bunch of little shapes. And I was thinking... Um, Here's like little, uh, these are my little baby mini punch buffets. Um, I have the little teardrop one and I have more of the little diamonds because I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> but I love them so much. They're so wonderful. Yeah, they're a little feisty and hard to work with, but it is worth it um, when you get to, you know, see what they, see the amazingness that they produce. So I was kind of, I wanted to see um, what what kind of design I could kind of add to this white space because it's, I just feel like it's calling for like a little bit of color, a little bit of like whimsy. I didn't know how doing some random little teardrops. The, the way I normally use these little um, shapes, I will actually do in a video. I will find a way to, to show you how I actually use them most of the time. The only time really that I can think of. I don't normally treat them like what I'm doing right now. I'm not tr trying to make them look like raindrops. This is strictly like, ooh, are they adding anything cool? I do love that little color combination that they're adding, but I don't know that they're doing what I had hoped. So we're going to go with the diamonds, which are... I feel like diamonds are more straightforward. We don't, we're, we have very low expectations. They're just shapes. Whereas those are like petals, they're raindrops. They just, there's, I feel like there's a little bit more to them where no one's expecting these to be anything. These are just little elements that have been added to a photo. That's how I feel. That color combination is amazing. I kind of like them when they're off the page because then it feels, I don't know, what is the word? It just feels more intentional when you have it kind of dripping down into the, into the page. So the last one in, it's going to be all about color. Is it the blue? Yes. But is that the right? this it was kind of the, the blue and the green I didn't want them to be too close together hmm I'm gonna keep playing with this and see that's what is so fun about this using these little paper punch buffets is like you can just mess around with them and it's just fun see how if you do this it it loses it loses something it looks too much like I was trying to build something whereas when it's more random it just, it feels looser. It just kind of has a different feel altogether. So even if I kind of bring these down here, 
This one is a really imperfect diamond. It didn't get punched very well. <laughs> like that. Okay, I like that. Okay, petals will have to go back for another day. Sorry, guys. But just, just so I could show you. So you notice how like here on this one, there's just like this random S. Some of them get punched in such a way where I was really going for like the, probably the back of the paper is what I was aiming for. But sometimes you'll get something weird when you punch paper on the back that was unintentional, but ends up being awesome. That's why I love these so much. Like that one. E-A-U. <laughs> it means nothing, but yet it, I don't know, it kind of is fun. Like, here's another example. I was trying to get this paper, but ended up getting this text, which can end up being a really cool part of your design. So punching paper, and these are little bits of paper, is a really inexpensive and really awesome way of just getting just color, I would say, color and pattern to work together. And I know that this was something I worked into my design last week, which will be kind of fun. The fact that they're showing up again. This was part of uh, last week's spread right here. When they occupied, they were going down the side of the building and now they're coming into the boat. <laughs> Almost like they're being in, they're getting an infestation of them. So I like. I like trying all different kinds of stuff with these little diamonds. You know, I haven't made hard and fast rules about how I use them, but I do find uh, lately that like uh, at least having one as like your anchor point kind of helps you build the rest of them. I used to kind of try and build them from the top or the bottom. The other fun thing about little punched pieces of paper is the scale is so different and unique it's like everything changes when it's so tiny and it's odd and you can't figure out what you're looking at sometimes it's just I don't know really fun so I felt like this could handle some whimsy so it still has something of a sense of humor because the card at the bottom is kind of more I want it to wanted it to be more simple I guess I probably what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to take the picture back here and trim it down a little bit because it's really big compared to this see how you can see the edge showing and sometimes that bugs me but I don't know if it bugs me that's what I'm going to do okay so before I forget because I can see myself forgetting this I'm going to show you how I'm going to make this page work with my binder so i'm going to do that with washi if you have not ever done this then this is a fun way of making your pocket pages work with different formats i'm using my trg washi and i'm going to use the measuring washi because that's what we do with our fish we measure them once we catch them and we tell fish tales about how big that fish was. And that kind of adds to the funny, the sense of humor. The subtle sense of humor here. Um, because I don't know what I'm going to do on the back side of this. I don't, I don't even actually know what next week's prompt is. And I like to let that be a surprise. I'm obviously going to have to work the um work this from the back side, and that means I'm going to have to put another. Uh, washi but I want to um, I want to do that washi and everything when I have a good vision for what this is going to be so I'm just going to do the front so that's all you're going to see at this point but that's what it will be for now and I think that's really lovely I love that pink I brought in a classic color it works really well with this with this whole story now you would think we're done but I am not I got really into this. <laughs> I was really, really inspired by this. And I realized that I had a lot more material to work with with this whole fish concept than I realized. So I wanted to show you some of the other things that I found in my, my stash. So one of the things just looking around is I found um, this page uh, from a book of some vintage book of some kind, but I loved the fact that it was called Cast Adrift. So I thought 
maybe there's a way of working that in or, you know, that's that's really funny that it says that. And I also found this. I think this is Wind in the Willows. I'm vaguely remembering it, but I may I could be totally wrong. Anyway, there he is sitting on his little lily pad. Um, and then he also hears him from the back. And then it talks about how Mr. Jeremy stuck his pole in the mud. He fastened the boat to it. He got, gets his fishing tackle. And then we have this. He takes a reed pole. He pushes the boat in open water. So we have a fishing theme going on, right? So I found these things in my stash. I also had found some other pieces that I didn't use in the pockets. This was an ad. Um, it's actually, I think it's packaging is what it is. The crazy crawler, a wow for action and results. So I thought that was really fun. And I actually sized it because I, I thought what I might do, the reason why I grabbed it was I was originally thinking of using it for one of my favorite, favorite elements, which is the library card pocket. So this is how I was envisioning is it that I would, um, it's actually sized the perfect width to become the back of the pocket like that. And then this would stick up and then I would cover the front and then I would put other little pieces of ephemera in here. I was thinking on the back of it, I would use um, one of these pages, like for instance, I would use the whole back of this little story about the tackle and, um, and just cover it from, from head to toe. Uh, but then as I was thinking about it, I realized, you know, that's pretty busy. That's a lot going on. Um, so then I started rethinking the project. Another piece, another little picture that I found um, was this little vintage lure. And it had the little, the little, I guess the little packaging that came with it. Or I don't know. It was just within the photograph. And I thought, I want to cut this whole thing out and treat it like it's a little embellishment. So that is like the little fun pop of color. And as I was sitting there contemplating my options, I originally thought maybe I would um, use this picture for the front of the pocket. It's another image that's full of little pocket lures. Um, then I had an epiphany um, of doing a little treatment on the back of the pocket. This is my very, very favorite thing to do with my paper is to mess with it, come up with different ways of making collages. This is just a, like an example of what I mean, is like make a whole collage of the back of the pocket. So it's got really beautiful, vibrant color. We have the water. And then I found this in my collection. It's a little vintage card. And I want to say that probably was a way of helping kids learn French, like a little French card. So then I thought I want to use this somehow on the front of this little pocket because it will be so cute. Um, and I love these little elements. I got them from an Etsy store. So then I started thinking, oh, I'll put that like on the top of the edge. So then this started really, I just really love this. So I, I'm scratching my idea of using this as part of the pocket. I feel like this is a lot of stuff going on. And in the little pocket, I might include the, I don't know. I'll just put stuff in here. Maybe I'll write out the, the actual scripture and then pop it in here. So I wanted to add a bonus pocket. I mean, it's still a pocket. Okay. So I wanted to add little tickets to kind of be the hinge. I know that's let me let me show you what I mean. So here's some little um, library card pockets that I've I have made in the past. And you see how they have a little ticket attached to the top and it's been punched. So I want to go ahead and add tickets to the side of this pocket and hinge it so it can be inside my book, kind of junk journal style. So that would be like a little homage to my favorite, one of my favorite crafting elements, which is the library card pocket. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that out and see if I can work with that. Maybe he's going to be in my pocket, but I just love, love, love that. And that is going to kind of be part of this whole spread. So it's going to get, let's say the holes are about right here. So it's going to lay right there. It's not going to be too crazy. I'm going to glue all that in place. 
and then it'll just become part of the spread. And it's a, a unique little fun feature. It's like a little, you know, a little mini page within the spread itself. I might, like I said, add scripture in there or something. But um, I just, I think it's so fun. And I'm going to add some of the text from one of these guys to the back of it so that that has kind of, that's fun too. So let me move all this stuff aside and get started on my bonus pocket. Okay, so I was looking through my paper stash and this actually was a strip that just kind of, uh, this is actually one of my, another favorite paper from Great Paper. Um, this is just a leftover strip and I saw this sitting in my, in the top of my little paper stash box and it was love at first sight. I just loved, loved, loved this combination together. So I'm just going to clean it up ever so slightly. Um, make it a little more, less. Sometimes wonky is good and it doesn't need to be perfect. Other times it looks nice, nicer. So with this one, I don't want too much of the paper getting wasted because it's going to be, you can even see it, that it's like coming down about right here. So that's a lot of paper that's, in my mind, no one's ever going to see. So what's the point of having it? So what I might do is shorten this, clean that up a little. Um, and I don't think I've ever built a paper, like a collage on the back side, the backer of the pocket. That's, that's kind of new, but I like it. And then I think that pop of color is amazing. Plus that bird is fishing technically. And this will be, this is like the anchor piece. So I want to make these even, even though this is cut wonky, which is again, fine. But I want to make those go evenly across. And now I can tell how much of this brown paper is even going to be seen. And I feel like if I cut this here, that's probably good. And I will save this in my little bits box because that little piece can be punched it can be cut into strips it can be used it still has life left in it so I'm gonna glue this down okay and then I have this wonderful little fish card here so I think I, what I want to do here is cut it off actually even bring it down lower I've never made a pocket like that. Usually they're a little, they're a little bit more embellished. This is a pretty, a pretty simple one compared to a lot that I like doing. Um, but that's fine because as you saw, it's going in a spread that has a lot going on. So like I mentioned before, I think I want to use my fussy cutting scissors. I want to treat this like it's a little embellishment for the time being. I don't know if this will be successful or if I can actually use it but I'm gonna try. Now, um, this little hook on its coming out of its little tail, um, for now I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and save it because I might be able to use it. And if that's the case, if I use it, I won't keep this, but because I don't know what I'm gonna do, I'll just save everything because I just wanna see if this is even gonna be a good idea. So I imagine that this is like, Here's an example of how I would use it. Like it would be a little embellishment kind of off of the, it would stick out a little bit like that. I think that's fun. I like the simplicity of this card. I think that would be weird. So it could also be, you know, this is another way I envisioned using it was like attaching it to the side. See how it's got like a, a really clean edge to it. So to me that, looks really good and intentional that it matches up with the side. I wonder what it would look like with just none of the hooks in the picture. Or just that hook in the picture. Let's let's take another stab at it. Now I'm going to clean it up. 
I mean, when is a lure not a lure, right? If it's a lure, it has to have a hook, at least one hook on it. <laughs> um, so this hook, this little set of hooks is like the least problematic hooks of all. And including them, you can clearly see that it's still a lure. And now it's a little bit better of an embellishment. It's a less problematic. Now, the other piece of this is I was envisioning putting this along the very edge. And if I did that, what would happen if I did this? Does that, does that look weird? It kind of looks weird. Kind of like just that alone. It can't jut out so far because this is going to just have two tickets right here. So it's like it doesn't have a whole lot of move, like room on that side. So I have to, I have to make a decision. Another option is tucking it in like that. I actually kind of like that. Then it's, it's less, um, that's less problematic. And you can still see that it says, and it says Orlando, Florida. Okay. I think this is a happy result, and I think this is going to make everyone will be happy. Mr. Fish will be happy. Um, I want it just high enough that you can read what it says. I'm going to get this little fish patootie glued down. There we go. You know what this little fish reminds me of? He reminds me of the little um worm that Oscar the Grouch had on Sesame Street, and I... I think his name was Slimy, and that's what he reminds me of with the little black eye and his bright colors. He totally reminds me of Slimy. Um, okay, so I'm going to, let's see. Whoop. So one thing I liked about these little elements, and this will echo the one that I put on the fisherman's card, the follow me guy. It'll match that. But it has these fun little threads that kind of stick out. That's fun. I don't know. It just feels kind of like, you know, kind of netty. <laughs> Speaking of netty. All right. So here's my final weird thing I, I was thinking of doing. Because I wanted to kind of pay homage to another verse in the scriptures that talk, you know, that talk about the nets. And we know that they had that amazing catch. So I was thinking about how can I incorporate a net into my layout? And then I realized I had this onion bag and it has this material that we know is not fishing net, but it does give that impression. So I wanted to see <laughs> uh, if I could kind of add that little weird element to it to kind of I don't know, give it a, a, that netting kind of. So let me see. I, I envisioned using it with my pocket somehow. So like, even if it's just something that's kind of like just sticking out here, like, oh, look, it's their net. Oh, you know what? I should turn it because it's bent that way. There you go. Isn't that kind of fun? I feel like it's kind of fun. Sometimes it's like nuances, right? You don't have to slap people in the face with the fish but you can kind of give them like the flavor of your your message and I think that's kind of neat like to me it looks to me <laughs> it does look like a fishing net um and I like it I think that's kind of fun okay so the other thing I had talked about was covering the back because like isn't that kind of lame when you if I flip the pocket over like a page that this boring backside is going to be showing there so I I don't love that. Um, I generally try to, you know, do something with that. And so here are my options. Um, this is actually the width is perfect for this pocket. Um, so Mr. Jeremy took a reed pole and pushed the boat out into the open water. I know a good place for minnows. Or we got more text, which I think is um, a great idea because it's more pocket to cover. So yeah, I think we're going with this. I think that's what we're going to do. Now, the interesting thing is how I like to do this is I like to glue the target. So whatever I'm trying to get 
covered or the paper, I tend to glue this and then I just cut everything else away. Now I do have this piece here that's jutting out two schools of thought. You can just, you know, leave it alone and just, you know, cut around the pocket or you're going to do what I'm going to do, which is what I generally do is I generally will glue everything. This, this, this is technically dead. So glue stick down. Okay. I'm breaking into my glue stick. I just, you should see all the teardrops that just, they sprayed everywhere all over my desktop. Busting out another glue stick. Okay. As I was saying, so what I like to do is even cover any embellishment that's sticking out like that. And it's going to get that backing um, itself. So everything will be covered. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it looks weird, but I think this is going to be pretty benign because of what it is so I'm going to hold it up so I can kind of to the light so I can kind of see like where the bottom of the pocket is I know that's probably a weird angle for you watching this <laughs> so okay back in there I forgot that I had to do the back of this otherwise I probably wouldn't have tried to shove all this stuff in there but that's okay so this is really the, the la this is lazy crafting, probably. I'm sure there's better ways to do this, but lazy crafting. Um, so now that it's more or less glued down, see how I'm just kind of incorporating that embellishment. And now I'm just trimming it all away. Whatever wasn't glued down is just getting cut off. My question is, do people actually measure the paper? Would you like measure it first um, and cut it out and then glue it to the thing, uh, the pocket? Or did the way that I just did, did that, is that totally fine? Is that normal? Because I always think in my head, I'm just doing, you know, I'm doing kind of, I'm, I'm lazy crafting, but because I don't really want to pull anything out and measure it because I like to eyeball things. This very bottom edge is not glued very well. So I'm going to glue all that down. So now you see it and you can see how this is kind of like jutting out, but it's pretty subtle. So that's kind of fun. I think that's fun. And just because we're we've got a theme going. I'm going to stick a few little stars so it looks like he was meant to be here. Like, <laughs> it was intentional that I added this. So um, I got my, I got my lure. I got my fishing net. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So I need to find myself a couple tickets. So I will probably do that off camera and add that last little piece in there. Um, because I probably have to dig them out. So I will show uh, in the next video how I got those in there. Plus, um, I'm going to wait until I do the next video to do the back side of this page and then give it the final punch through um, once I have the other washi in place. But that is what I have for this week's prompt, which was a verse, quote, or lyric. And I went crazy with. <laughs> With this card, this inspired, this uh, week's um, spread, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, uh, Mark 117. So we got a little bit of Mark. We have a little bit of Luke. Um, and I, I think this is so fun. I was really, really, really looking forward to doing this spread. Probably more excitement for this than I, I can remember. This wasn't like a task or a job I had to do. This was something I was really looking forward to. And I think it's really fun and quirky. And um, yeah, I love it. I hope God loves it. And um, yeah, I'm really grateful for cre creativity. What a great gift it is. Not just for like the creator to watch his creation create, but for us as, as the created, for us to get to create ourselves. Like what it's, it's an enormous pleasure and, and joy. So I feel really grateful looking upon this it turned out really fun and I'm sure now you will not look at your onion bag the same way again <laughs> so
So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to put links, uh, the credit, like photo credits down in the description box. Um, different links. We have supplied links, like standard links for the pocket uh, page challenge supply list. Um, but anything I use that's out of the ordinary will also be listed down below. And I hope that you enjoyed this week's prompt and that you are prompted to put some heart into a verse, lyric, or quote that means something to you. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody. Okay. Hello everybody. I think I turned away from that one. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. <clears throat> Hi everybody. It's Corey at the Reset Girl. Hi, everybody. It's Corey at the Reset Girl. Hello, everybody. It's Corey at the Reset Girl. Hi, everybody. It's Corey at the Reset Girl.